So you're listening to Gender Queries on 100.5 FM, CFRO, Vancouver's Cooperative Radio. And joining us now are, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself, name and pronouns, please. Hi, my name is Kelsey Jacobson I'm from Current Electrolysis, and I use they, them pronouns. Hello, my name is Jenny Malbuff. I'm the owner of Curalux Electrolysis, and I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I found uh, you folks on uh, Reddit's r slash trans Vancouver some time ago. And can you help us understand what is electrolysis? Uh, so electrolysis is a method of permanent hair removal. Each hair is treated individually, which is kind of the thing that makes it unique and a little bit different than like laser hair removal. We use either thermolysis, galvanic or blend current setting to uh, just destroy the dermal papilla. That's where the hair gets its nutrients from the blood source. And once the once there's no blood source, there's no nourishment for hair to grow and it ceases to exist. So you're basically shocking out of, out of existence. <laughs> More or less, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what, kind, what kind of ex- uh, results can you expect from electrolysis? Like I know a lot of trans folks don't like their facial hair. Some people really do. And uh, <laughs> uh, what kind of results can you get? And roughly how long does it take? So results depend on kind of like your uh, time, budget, commitment. Uh, we generally say a window of 12 to 24 months of regular appointments or they become less frequent around the end, but regular appointments at the beginning, uh, at least uh, you can get completely permanent hair removal, all the hair gone, um, or you can, the results are kind of up to you. The longer you keep up with it and the more dedicated you are to keeping to your schedule, the more satisfaction you'll get from your treatment. Great. So like you'll basically take care of everything. Yes, we can take every hair. That's the cool thing about electrolysis. It can all be, we can see it all. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> we take it all. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I like I had laser and I know like there has there's like a couple hairs that keep on coming out. And <laughs> uh, I guess a question with that, uh, can people go to you for touch ups after laser? Absolutely. That's actually a really popular um, method. A lot of people choose to go that route when removing larger areas of hair. They'll start with the course of laser and whatever the laser leaves behind. Absolutely. Electrolysis can pick up the rest. Awesome. And what sets you folks apart from other providers? Well, me and Jenny actually just uh, opened the electrolysis cooperative a few months ago. Um, We decided it was time to open our own space uh, to a space that kind of focuses on just like a better standard of care for the trans community, you know, a bit more privacy, more discreet location where you're not sharing a room in a another beauty salon and just like generally you know people who kind of get it in this space we make sure everybody's kind of cool and like everybody can feel comfortable and safe and have a good time there yeah no worries about getting misgendered by providers (laughs) i know that happened to a lot of folks so it's just like yeah you're, you're paying quite a bit and people are misgendering you and that sucks yeah exactly i also wanted to add that we um our equipment actually makes us different than this typical electrolysis studio we use surgical microscopes to um to assist with our treatments it helps us see the hair uh, the follicle and the skin reactions that are happening before the naked eye so we have a higher success rate, faster kill rates, we call them, and um, less skin damage for our clients. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so what, can you walk us through what a typical session looks like? I show up at your place, what happens? Well, all of our clients start with a consultation where we, um, we give them our spiel and then we assess their wants and needs. And then uh, during that consultation, we uh, also provide a complimentary sample treatment just to be able to assess your current requirements and um, like as in electrical current requirements <laughs> and skin reactions and what kind of aftercare we'll need to have. That appointment, we also determine the frequency of your treatments and your schedule and in turn your estimate for um, financial investment. Depending on the area that you are interested in having hair removed from will determine how your next appointment goes, (laughs) your next series of appointments and um, how far apart those treatments are. 
So all of that's determined at the consultation, but essentially we're going to just be, you know, working to clear whatever amount we can in the set appointment time. And folks are concerned about COVID and sanitation. And can you tell us uh, some of the precautions you take? We already have very strict sanitation and disinfection practices. So COVID protocols were not that far of a leap for us. We already wore masks and gloves and sanitized everything that we touch frequently. Um, so I think the biggest thing that we had to change was um, sending out and monitoring the COVID questionnaires and uh, making sure that we didn't have a lot of people in our waiting room. We asked that they just come for their appointment time and not too, too much early. -er. Um, and then really that's, I, I think it, just providing lots and lots of, of sanitizer everywhere that otherwise everything was, it was minimal changes around the office. So some people are worried about pain and I understand, well, laser I've had, it was fairly painful, but not too bad. What can you do to kind of alleviate that? Or if people have concerns, how can you to uh, specifically address that? There's a uh, quite a few different pain management options. Uh, first of all, everybody's super, super different with their pain tolerance. I've found to just stop guessing at all and fill the consultation because a lot of my clients just fall asleep through their treatment. I put on a nice playlist and they just doze off. And for some people, it's a bit more of a struggle and takes a little more work. So um, the most common pain management options will be um, taking like a Tylenol and Avil before your appointment. Um, you can take one of each that can be really effective. But the topical numbing creams are super popular. Um, we have some Zenta for sale at the space, but you can go to your drugstore. There's Zenta, Emla, all sorts of brands out there that have good uh, topical numbing agents. And at your consultation, we'll give you some tips and tricks too for applying that. We found some little like hacks to make those creams just a little more effective than the instructions on the tube, specifically for electrolysis. Um, and generally for most folks, uh, the topical numbing cream and just booking a session as long as you can do is is generally a good way to proceed. You know, not everybody can just sit there for two hours straight. So if we're doing 30 minutes a week, that's that's what we do. Keep coming and it works. <laughs> and I know trans folks do a lot of different things, maybe not so great things to deal with their facial hair. Is there anything you shouldn't do uh, if you plan on getting electrolysis or hair removal in the future? So whatever you do, don't remove the hair at the root. That's like the golden rule. <laughs> so if you're, uh, I mean, if you have been tweezing, plucking, waxing, all that stuff, you can still come in. We'll still do the console. We'll go over it. It's just when you remove a hair at the root, it actually takes quite some time for us to be able to see that specific hair again. And we can only treat hairs that we can actually see. So by removing hairs at the root, you'll just be slowing down your final time of completion. If you want to temporarily remove hair between sessions, uh, let's say we only get through half of your face and you'd really like to, you know, not have the other half of your face have hair for the rest of the week before our next session, you can use, um, you can shave. Shaving is the most popular. Anything where you're just cutting the hair off at the skin surface level, um, shaving, clipping, um, those things are fine, but just, uh, keep that root intact because we rely on that to follow the hair growth cycle for optimal treatment. All right. So yeah, don't, don't run an effluator over your face. Yeah. <laughs> A, because it's terrible <laughs> and B, because it's terrible for hair removal. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I noticed uh, that you have uh, surgical preparation hair removal and I'm uh, wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we both of me and Jenny do the surgical preparation and hair removal for um, phalloplasty and for vaginoplasty. The process is funded through the gender surgery program. So you do have to um, go through your consults and you do have to come with a little like piece of paper saying that, you know, you've been approved. <laughs> but other than that, you just come in. That's the area that we clear before your surgery. How long in advance do you have to get that all done? So <laughs> Uh, once you have your consultation with the gender surgery program, as Kelsey mentioned, they do give you a hair prescription letter, um, which they bring to us during the consultation. And then we kind of estimate about 
12 best case scenario months to 18 to 24. So we tend to have a very specific formula that works very well and gets people to their surgical site as soon as, soon as humanly possible, provided that there's no interruptions uh, like uh, COVID or yeah. um, you know missing a bunch of appointments in a row. But um, for vaginoplasty and for um, phalloplasty, the schedule of treatment is if we are able to do a full clearance of the area is we wanna see you every six weeks. You need to come and see us approximately six to 10 clearances. So if you're doing that math, it's up to two years, we could be oh, wow. uh, okay. seeing you for hair removal. And uh, do you know when it started getting funding? Because I know uh, years ago, it definitely wasn't. Yeah, it was two and a half years ago, I believe. But the the whole kind of gender surgery program set up and the hair removal uh, referrals didn't quite get started until about two years ago. Okay, you folks are kind of a new trans owned business slash co op. Uh, is it more co op than business, I guess? Yeah, it's a co op. We all have our own business, but we like work together. We're not competitors. We like kind of join forces to make something a little better. Than we could do alone so yeah and i understand you have other people as well uh and one of your folks does sliding scale rates yeah we've got a new newer electrologist uh ethan from not your mama's hair, hair removal <laughs> awesome <laughs> he's awesome um he is offering sliding scale he works in our clinic too right now yeah so whatever i mean you opened well you kind of created this during the pandemic uh what are some of the challenges you faced i mean shut down we had to move locations for sure was probably our biggest challenge, our, our last location. Um, everything was just closed for so long. It's a lot of expensive equipment to leave yeah. in a closed down business. So we kind of had to haul it all out, keep it stored safely, and then kind of start from scratch. We were renting a little space in a, a beauty center, but uh, yeah, making the decision to open uh, our own uh, entire clinic during a pretty uncertain, <laughs> early out of covid time like <laughs> january february march was really scary <laughs> but we're really glad we did it we're we're really happy with how how everything turned out yeah started. and yeah so you've done it i mean like uh, a lot of businesses don't survive more than the first six months even less you know that survive a year and uh you're still in business you're still operating you're still offering these uh, valuable services i think that because um you know during the pandemic personal services here in BC have not had uh, very little or no rates of transmission. And we've yeah. been allowed to remain open other than the first initial shutdown. Like I have not been busy or I, this is as busy as I've ever been. And since the surgeries have kind of picked up again, you know, it's, um, it's nice that we, and we're really uh, grateful <laughs> and feel fortunate that our business hasn't been interrupted like others. Yeah, I understand there's uh, the TransCare BC uh, is kind of the central point for trans folks to contact to get started on referrals and consults and that uh, hair prescription, I guess anti-hair prescription <laughs> <laughs> might be better. And uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you're interested in finding out more information about that, you can go to TransCare BC's website and they have a lot of resources and uh, a lot of folks called system navigators that work for them that help people go through the system, which is uh, really nice because sometimes it's very confusing to figure out all the medical stuff, right? Uh, so how can people find out more about you folks? We have a website. We have an Instagram. Um, Jenny, is the website, how's the website doing right now? It will be live in one week. <laughs> oh, oh, great. So it's perfect timing. Yeah. I it think we live. each have our, our own individual business websites, but the electrolysis cooperative will be live in one week. <laughs> and what's going to, what's the address going to be on that? It's electrocoop.ca. .ca. Cool. The Electrolysis Cooperative Instagram is live and it kind of links to all of our personal Instagrams too. If you want a more like in-depth view at like what Jenny's page looks like and or what Ethan's page or my page, you kind of get an idea, like look and choose before you, you know, give someone a shout. Great. So thanks for coming on, Jenny and Kelsey. Thank thanks you. Thank you very much, Catherine. <laughs>